Okay, hello everyone! After yesterday where there were more and new cards revealed once again of the Cobalt expansion, I wanna follow it up with another review video where I'm gonna talk with you about the cards uh, with my opinion on the new cards that are revealed so far. And the first one I wanna take a look at is this one, the Feral Gibberer. It's a 1 mana 1 1. It is an, uh, kinda interesting, maybe a little bit more of an, uh, a fun card that gets here to the game. We have seen a more 1 1s, we have seen more, uh, early cards. It's a funny card. When I saw the card being reviewed, I was obviously not thinking this will be a really insane card. But I gotta give this card a little respect because I also think this card is not too bad. It is an, uh, it is a 1 mana 1 1. And if you are a little bit living in a dream world and you can play this at turn 1 and you're pl you play against a little bit of a slower deck, you can, uh, you can just hit the face and you play another one. Then there are suddenly two 1-1s one on the board and if you just keep uh, hitting on the face, you can actually make a pretty reasonable board with a lot of 1-1s. One you gain a lot of value out of this, this card and your opponent has to stop it. Of course, that's a little bit of a dream world. Because there is some hidden value in this card, but making that work and the consistency of the card makes it a little um, makes it a little questionable. There are of course a lot of uh, buff cards that can synergize pretty well with this one. It uh, it yeah it's it, it's not on the power level like a firefly, but if I look at other one drops, it's some pretty okay one drop that can uh, can sneak in a lot of uh, value. It's a good card for maybe a quest hunter deck, maybe it can find a place there. Besides that, I think it's gonna have a really hard time, but uh, it is a one drop that um, that I think will definitely get some play or at least giving a try and the more control the meta goes, the more the better this is a one drop can be. You just gain only new ones and can maybe make some, uh, some, some value happen. And the next card is actually the legendary card of the Hunter. It is Katerina Winter Wisp. And about this card I'm actually super excited. Where normally Hunter is not the class that it gets the greatest legendaries. And where Hunter normally really struggles also to get into late game positionings. Maybe the Katerina can, can fill some of the spots away. I think for Hunter, um, being this a battle cry and a death rattle and with recruit the breeze, just to make it a little bit more clean again, with the recruit mechanic you will get a legendary or, or you will get a beast out of your deck summoning on the board. So when I saw this card the first thing I was thinking about a big Hunter deck. There are a lot of death rattle Hunter decks, you can make a really big Hunter deck, play it with a lot of spells, there were some... Um, some old school um, Barnes big um, hunter decks around. You have with the high main some really um, some really strong cards that you can pull out of it. So maybe big hunter can be a thing for this. It's kind of comparable in a way to power uh, to Call of the Wild, the uh, the old Call of the Wild. An eight mana six six kind of makes up for like two of the pieces at least, and then you gain a third one at the end as a death rattle. I think it's really important that this card is not too slow, and I think with an eight mana six six battle cry, you're probably gonna get two really big minions on the board. I think the card is not necessarily too slow. The value of the card, it might not be the greatest fit for a mid range hunter if the your average minion for a hunter is a two or a three mana card. You will probably get like a 4-3 on average, like let's say let's say a 4-2, a 4-3. Then it's kinda is it's still kinda comparable with Call of the Wild, because you get yourself the Misha out of your deck. You gain yourself maybe not the, the buff mechanics and the charge mechanics and the top mechanics, but the stats of the card are a little bit stronger. It's less flexible. Um, but you can make your deck around it. I think you can make your deck around it. I really want to try this card. I think this card can make work. You can really make your deck a little bit around it. You can play it with a lot of spells. Hunter is a class with good spells. So if you just play a lot of spells and then you play like Katarina. Maybe you even play it with Jishar. Maybe you play it like this. And it can be really... It's kind of like a Barnes mechanic in that way. I still see the recruit mechanic as an, um, a Barnes mechanic maybe sometimes. But maybe this can already fit reasonably well in the Hunter as a mid-range deck. Of course, the biggest problem for Hunter is their hero power. Hunter has already some really great late-game cards. 
The problem for Hunter with the late game cards is, well, they cannot really get there. They don't have the greatest heal gain. Of course, you're not going to play this card with penguins in your deck. Let's that be clear. So you have to make your deck around it. And uh, cool card. Happy to see a Hunter Legendary I can definitely consider to, to make play. Oh yeah, it's not a beast, that's true. You have to do it with beast, You got that's true. I didn't mention that completely. Sudden Betrayal, and when I saw the secret, there is a new thing coming. Rogue is getting secrets. Rogue is exactly gonna get three secrets, and two have been revealed already. The first one that was revealed is the Sudden Betrayal. When a minion attacks your hero, instead it attacks one of its neighbors. So, a little bit question for me. I don't think this is an... Uh, when I was looking at the card, I was like, wait, why won't I play this over the normal Betrayal? And the answer is because you can always play it for two mana without um, needing to wait for the perfect uh, situation. But even Betrayal doesn't get played at all. So, kind of hard for me to see why it will be a good fit. Also, only having three secrets yet for the rogue, it will be a little bit hard for a rogue to fit in. It can be nice for a more miracle combo way of, uh, of a rogue, where you have like just cards you can play. And with an auctioneer, of course, can make a lot of draw possible. It's uh, not a secret I can see Rogue really benefiting much yet from. It doesn't synergize well with any of the, the decks yet. So, gonna be really hard for the Rogue to fit this one in. So, the second secret that the uh, Hunter will, the Rogue will gain is the Cheat Death. Secret when a friendly minion dies, return it to your hand. It costs two less. More, a little bit more optimistic about this card. Even I really have to see how the secret for Rogue really is gonna turn out. I mean, every opponent knows when there are only three secrets around, probably what the secrets are gonna be. When a friendly minion dies, return it to your hand, it costs two less. It's like a shadow step effect. You pay two mana for it. Uh, don't really just see it. Like, you need a minion on the board that your opponent really has to remove. To make the secret work. Yet yeah, can be good with like a Kelazit or an Edwin. But if your opponent knows it is around. Or you have a minion on board. People will definitely consider playing around it. It's just more mana than a Shadow Step. It's like a getaway Shadow Step in a way. There is ways if you have a valuable deck. If you have a big value deck. There are reasons to play this. But then I kind of still wait for a Rogue card that summons a secret on the board or that discovers a secret or i'm looking for a little bit more opportunities because on alone or really alone it's just not good enough for rogue to play in two mana secret i'm i'm waiting for more cards that synergize with rogue secrets that help support the rogue secrets i think that is a hint from blizzard to say hey we are having this in mind we gonna get more secrets in the next expansions. We gonna create more space around it. Or at least do some synergy with it. Because alone, yeah, you can draw with an auctioneer. But you also have already other rogue spells. We need to we need more synergy for the, the secrets to really fit in rogue well. Okay, and now guys, it's already time. Where I think I might just be reviewing the best card of the wall set already. We have only seen 15, 20 cards so far of the expansion. But damn, what was did what did what did they reveal a card yesterday? Dust Breaker. Four mana 3-3. Three, three. If you are holding a dragon, deal three damage to all other minions. So it's just an hellfire. But just in a lot of ways better. It's an hellfire. Where you don't deal damage to the faces. What I think is really beneficial for Priest. That you are not damaging your face or your opponent's face. Priest is a little bit of a slower deck. So it doesn't deal face damage. And you gain yourself a 3-3. Tree -tree. You just gain yourself a 3-3 tree -tree on the board. And it's a dragon. So it even supports other dragons. Maybe it can even get supported by other dragons in the future too. But it even helps other cards in the Dragon Priest. In an... In priest to just be there 
Crazy card, crazy card. It reminds me on Dragon Operative, what got revealed at the end of the last rotation set. That was just insanely strong and made a whole new archetype possible. Well, this is just the Dragon Operative from the set. It's insane. It's a Ravaging Ghoul, but just three times better. It's a Hellfire, but just three times better. You, you're just gonna clear the board like it's a three damage AOE is so good. Yes, Priest has already good board clears, sure. But having a minion that can do it, having a minion that supports other dragon, having a minion that just survives it and will probably just be an at turn four and zero mana treat you on an empty board because of it just dealing with everything that happened in the first three turns, it's insane. It's a really insane card. If you just compare it to old revealed cards, if you compare it to Hellfire, if you compare it to like the Excavated Evil, what was a 3 damage AoE Priest card before, but one mana more and not summoning a body, it's an incredibly power creep. And I think it, I can already say this will be in top 3 card revealed of the expansion, but I think it might just be the best card or revealed out that will be revealed even we are only 20 cards in it's one of the best cards ever revealed in hearthstone and yeah it, it's it will just be seen in probably every priest deck almost the rune spear and the rune spear is the legendary weapon from the shaman as we all know Every class will be getting an, one legendary weapon. And the Shaman Legendary, if we just look at the stats of the weapon, we see 8 mana 3-3. Three, three. I think we have to realize that we then should probably read the text of the card. Because of course an 8 mana 3-3 three, three doesn't really s do much to me as an 8 mana card. So I am really looking for an insanely good text here to make the card good. 8 mana 3-3, three, three. after your hero attacks, discover a spell and cast it with random targets. It's a really hard card to re to give a good review on. Because of the discover mechanic and the random targets and everything. It's kind of co comparable to the Tortillion that is already um, what has been... What is also an 8 mana card and also discovers a spell that you cast immediately. We kind of have to look at the Shaman spells. And I think it might be a little bit... It has potential of maybe being uh, a little bit better than the Tortillion. The only problem I see is that the Shaman spells are just not synergizing well. If you get a light... The, the one thing that uh, where Shaman spells really synergize well is... Is the cast of random targets. Because Shaman spells are often AoE. They are often working on your opponent minions. So... If you play a Lightning Storm, you know what the Lightning Storm will do. If you play a Maelstrom, you know what the Maelstrom will do. If you play a Volcano, well not necessarily, but if you're not on the board, you know what the Volcano will do. So the random targets is not so random of this card. The Discover a little bit less because a lot of Shaman spells are cheap. Shaman is not having cheap spells. So that's something that really we will pay back in it. Um, you're not gonna get the incredible value maybe directly of it. But you have three charges. So you can do it three times. So the value, the potential value of the card is really good. The only thing that I'm just really worried about, about all the weapons that are revealed so far, is oozes, harrisons. What are you gonna do when people play these cards? And that's a big concern for me. Because it's, it doesn't hurt you too much to just play with a Ooze or play with a Harrison in your deck. And it can really just destroy cards like this. I think it has potential. I definitely think it is not a weapon that should get overlooked. I think it's a pretty fun weapon too in some way. And I think it is less random than you might think when you read the random target effect because of the Shaman. So I see some potential but... Yeah, it's it's going to be hard for the card to really get there in their constructed Shaman decks. And next is a, a Druid spell being revealed. It is a Branching Pets. Branching Pets, 4 mana Druid spell. But actually the first time we have a Choose Twice mechanic. 
it is a choose twice mechanic you can also choose the um, one of your options d twice so it doesn't mean that you have to use two different options no you can choose the same one also twice and i think this is a good card and the flexibility is what makes this card good you can use this card in so many different ways especially in defensive ways but also in offensive ways you can use it as a card of gain 12 armor you can use it as a card of draw two cards you can use it as a shield block of draw a card and gain six armor and i think this is just going to be a card that a druid deck just wants to put in one time you can also use it as a small way of a savage draw where every minion gains to attack this card is comparable in a way to to feral rage but just better because of it you can use it in so many different ways looking at the spot hey we play a control matchup let's just let's just um draw two cards hey we play and i need my armor now let's gain 12 armor hey i i can now have finish potential let's give it two attack everything on the board i think it is an uh i think it is a not so maybe fleshy card but it is a card that is pretty pretty well fit for the druid in the way of it having the the two things that it likes a lot getting draw gaining armor for maybe the later in the game and i uh i think the flexibility of the card is what makes it good i think you will definitely see this card uh find competitive play and yeah just as a one-off just as a one-off fit it in not so uh not so insanely it's not gonna like make the deck incredibly much stronger but you will like the flexibility of the card and um will just be a great fit level up uh, so one of the most liked mechanics that i had always in Paladin was the way of silver hand recruits being buffed now we have a five mana level up give your silver hand recruits plus two plus two and taunt reminds me really on quadmaster quadmaster has been a card that was one of the older paladin cards in the same meta where you had muster of battle where you gain gave all your recruits plus two plus two the only big difference was you had a five mana two five and this is a five mana spell so you're just completely missing on the two five what makes me directly look at this card being quite bad the quadmaster was a fine card it was a pretty nice card but it was not an broken card at all and with not having muster around with not having the 2-5 body i think this guy this card will have a really hard time it's a uh, card that is situational there will be times where this card is just completely unplayable because you don't have silver hand recruits on your board yet can be a great card for maybe some wild decks but again why would you then quad master is just a better example you just get a better body of it so this spell is um, pretty underwhelming. It's not great in the current uh, state of Paladin where there are not many other cards that support you getting a lot of silver hand recruits on the board or supporting them in um, in a buff way mechanic. So I don't really see this card adding a, di uh, a lot to that. We really need some, we really need a muster of battle to come into a Hearthstone or in Standard again to make an, cards like this uh, considerable in Paladin decks again. All right, the next card is one of the stack mechanics again and for the warrior where um, you can uh, upgrade it every time you play it. So here the lesser material spellstone is on summon 155. If after that you can uh, the next time you will summon it it summons 255 mitro golems and then the finisher is the summon 355 mitro golems. It's kind of like a, the way of how jades are working in an upgrade way of having a limit to three and being a little uh, going faster. I really have a like a hard time sometimes uh, looking at these warrior cards, how good they can really stack it up. It's not a mechanic I feel warrior can like is required or can allow itself to play such slow cards. Um, it can stack of course really well you can have great decks uh, of warrior where you if you play it with a deaf man's hand you can uh, maybe even go go better on it in a way of fatigue warrior 
It's just a little slow. It's a 7 mana 5-5. Five, five. Equip and weapon to upgrade, sure. And um, it will definitely find a little bit of a better place. It's a little bit... It's still a little bit... Um, it can still die to like Dragonfire Potions and Anduins. And they, they are kind of cards that are being around a lot in the meta. Like if you p if you play against Priest and Priest is just on tier 1 or on tier 2 deck. They will keep their Dragonfire Potions and Anduin for a long time. Maybe that's good with Anduin. Maybe not so nice for like a Dragonfire Potion. I feel it's kind of like an... I just have a little hard time finding this card any place. I, it's kind of awkward or something to, to really make this card work. Um, yeah, there are ways. It's just 7 mana. It's expensive. Just finds a little hard time in the current meta. I just feel there are cards around that, that just do this, but they just do it better. And I hope, uh, I hope there will be some... Some good synergy though. It's a little, um, it's not so flashy mechanic. It's a little bit of an obvious uh, mechanic. We'll see. I uh, I hope we can uh, see it some play. And uh, of course with the recruit mechanic being in the warrior now also. There will be decks that really going to try big warrior decks. Easy big easy warrior decks. And then you want to have a deck full of spells. And maybe in that deck this is like the greatest, a great fit. To still not lose the value game. So we'll see. Um, I can see it though. I can definitely see it. Alright. The latest card so far revealed. Is uh, the Twig of the World Tree. It's the card. It's the Druid weapon. The legendary Druid weapon. That just got revealed. And um, when I saw this card. I directly was only thinking of one way. How can we remove this weapon to get the effect on directly? Because you don't play this weapon for your light justice effect of like having a 4 mana 1-5 weapon. No, you play this weapon because of the death rattle. And if I read this card correctly and I see I gain 10 mana crystals, I see it the same way as Norish. I see it as we gain the mana crystals. So... If we have this card on the board, I play my Medivh, I see this as I gain 10 new mana crystals once again, and I have an I have 10 mana available again. So I can make I can sometimes make plays of like 20 mana with this card. It's really good. I think it is a good weapon, uh, especially in Druid that has potential. There are, I definitely think the best way of going with this card in standard is Medivh. I actually see a really broken combo with Blinktron in Wild, where if you go with this card, you play Blinktron right afterwards, and you have an availability of 10 mana to just immediately play your ultimate infestation. It, um, it's, a, it's a similar card to Kuhn, but just a little better. Um, you can make the power plays earlier, it refreshes better, and you can set it up maybe a little bit better on a turn that normally is not your greatest turn. So this card can make really good plays in, uh, in combo druid decks, in heavy ram druid decks. But what I'm also really excited about is this can bring combo druid decks back in the game maybe. There was always a thing with Aviana, with Kuhn, that was so great about like a Meligos druid. And this card can bring Meligos Druid maybe back again. If you then, if you just use your charges during the game, then you slam the Meligos on the board, and then you slam, and then you refresh ten mana crystals, and you can make like a double swipe Moonfire turn, and you just guarantee win the game. I can see Meli Druid just becoming a thing again, and I love it because it's a great deck, it's a combo deck. So, and Druid is a deck that can also play really defensive. It's not really a weapon, yes, it, like, in the way I just explained it, like, against a Ram Druid, you don't want to ooze this. Against the Meligos deck, you actually probably want to ooze it. So it's really interesting how this card, like, fits out. It's, it doesn't want, like, you don't want to happen that a weapon hate this card, but there will be m ways where you actually want to. So it's gonna be a really cool card, and, um, yeah, I like this card. Again, it's like an, it's just what... 
fits the Druid class really well. It's a, it's a strong card. It has so much combo mechanic. It's it's really what Druid is looking for. It will f see definitely... I'm definitely going to try out this card a lot. It's one of the cards I'm really excited about to try out. And um, it's going to be an, um, a really fun card. I really wonder how it's going to be seen. And with cards like Ultimate Infestation around, cards like this are already really good on itself. I think it will see quite some play. And I, rate, I will rate the weapon as a really... One of the better weapons like revealed so far. So yeah, that was uh, the review for now. Uh, every time there will be a lot of, a lot of new re uh, cards revealed, I will follow it up with a new review, guys. So stay tuned and let's get uh, ready for the Kobolds and Catacombs. <laughs> 